today we're going to wrap up the Sok level 1 pathway from try hack me and today's video will be about the green halt fish room which will be the last room we are covering in this track you can find all of the walkthroughs of this track in this playlist Sok level 1 try hack me and i'm going to put the link of this playlist in the video description all right so now let's get started with the green halt fish so green halt fish is a room where you put yourself in the shoes of a soak analyst your colleague has forwarded an email to you okay suspecting that it is a phishing attack so as the description says here a sales executive at Greenhold PLC received an email that he did not expect to receive from a customer. So you need the description, you need to analyze the email that your colleague has sent you. As a SOC analyst, you need to understand how to distinguish between a regular email coming from a colleague or a suspicious email claiming to be coming from a colleague. So we're gonna uh, open the virtual machine here, right click, open with other app previously we analyzed emails using the rice email uh, analysis tools such as fish tool on gofish so there we're going to analyze the email using um, mozilla thunderbird so we're going to open all right so this is the email that my colleague or your colleague has received and we need to start the analysis so the first thing we want to locate is the from the form indicates the sender of the email address in case it is Mr. James Jackson or claiming to be Mr. James Jackson. This is the subject. It is about transfer reference number. And as you can see, we have the reply field where it specifies uh, where the email will go to in case we reply to this email. It's going to go to this address. It's the same as the original one. And we have the two to whom it is addressed it's addressed to the webmaster at redacted.org so that is the body of the email we read the body good day webmaster so that's the first indication that this is not an original email coming from a regular person it could be coming from an attacker because as you can see guys the greetings is not personalized to the recipient usually if the email is uh, regular and original it's gonna address you by your name but here it is not addressing you by your name that's the first indication as instructed funds has been transferred to your account this morning via Swift again we have another thing there is a grammatical error here funds have been transferred it should not be has there should be have here so that is another indication usually typos and grammatical errors may happen during email communication particularly if the sender was not a native english speaker so it is not a hundred percent definite indication that this is uh, there is something wrong with the email but you may take it into consideration and combine it with other factors you may see in the email okay let's go on details are as below and a receipt of payment is attached so there is an attachment here if you scroll down we can see the name of the attachment, SWT, the number of the, uh, you know, transaction underscore PDF underscore dot CAP. So, again, the attachment looks weird because usually attachments come in limited forms, uh, I, either Word, Excel, or PDF, corporate emails I'm talking about here. But the extension is weird dot CAP. We're going to come to attachment analysis as we progress further. Let's go on. Interbank, transfer reference number, transaction status. Okay, best regards. And here is the name and the position of the sender and the corporate. All right. So, so far, so forth, we only have the from. And we have learned that there is no personalized addressing and there is a grammatical mistake here and attachment looks weird all right let's take a look at the source by, by clicking view source we can take a look at the header so in the header section we can highlight several details such as the ip address of the center 
So take a look at this. The return path here uh, indicates the domain name of the sender. So the domain name of the sender here matches the domain name we saw earlier because sometimes the from field here could indicate uh, an email address that's way different than the email address or the domain you will see here. If this happened to you, you might have uh, spotted a phishing attack with sp spoofing uh, taste because here you can spoof an email address to make it to, uh, to make the email looks like it's coming from a destination as uh, you wish it to be for example you can make the email coming as it's coming as it's coming from Google you will see here info at google.com but when you open the source you can see different domain here in the return path so make sure the return path matches the front field you see earlier and this is the let's see here okay look at this this is the IP address of the sender this is the IP address of the mail server that sent the message it could be the SMTP server local one installed on the attacker's machine or it could be the SMTP server that of the host that attacker used to transfer the email Yahoo Gmail Hotmail so on and so forth and here we have these details look at this SPF equal fail which means that the email address has failed the SPF test SPF is a sender policy framework record that email communications and providers use to validate or authenticate the email address if SPF fail if you see SPF equal to fail it means that the sender has failed to authenticate themselves as senders of this domain name so there is a chance that this is a spoofed email address of this domain name if SPF equal to fail or it could be that you have received the email from the real sender but the, uh, the, the domain name doesn't have SPF record so here it's also not uh, a definite indication that this is a spoofed email address DMARC there is no DMARC record all right so scrolling down here we see the received from so what we care about really when analyzing email headers are a couple fields we need to see the SPF status okay we need to take a look at the return path also we need to take a look at the UX originating IP so here it's stating that it's received from this IP address this is the IP address of the sender as stated earlier and this is look at this received from so this is the SMTP server that the attacker used or the sender used to send the email address this is the domain name host winesdns.com now we have analyzed the headers our first insight or impression about this email address is that it may be a spoofed email address because SPF equal to fail okay and this is not uh, a regular popular SMTP server so it could be uh, some private SMTP server the attacker is using and we have the good day here the uh, the greetings wasn't personalized and there was a grammatical mistake now the last straw here will be the email attachment we're gonna analyze the email attachment now and see the real extension so let's see here I'm gonna click on save as to desktop all right let's now analyze this So this is the attachment. I'm gonna file SWT and take a look at the type of this attachment. So indeed the real file type is compressed file or archive data. So the extension dot cap here, I don't know why would someone put an ex a weird extension to uh, their attachment and not leave it as it is usually when you send an attachment as an archive 
it's going to be very clear from the exception that it should be RIR, right? But here it's cap, which is weird. Now, what we need to do next is to extract the SHA256. We're going to take this and head over to VirusTotal. So search, input the hash, and enter. And we have 46 hits out of 62. This means that this is really um, an email address coming from an attacker or a hacking attempt. Click on the community, we see the community uh, contributions. We go to details. You can take a look at the various details, MD5, SH8, SH256. The file type, as you can see, it's ARIR or compressed. The file size, the real file size. And we see various names witnessed in the wild, such as attachment to download triple A's file result download.pdf. So there's various names the attackers have used in their campaigns. So what can we call this? We can call this a phishing campaign, but with the intent of installing malware. Not all phishing campaigns are intended to steal credentials. A phishing campaign such as this one, okay, uh, the purpose of this campaign is to infect as many hosts as possible with the attachments. So always when you see an attachment in the email address, it will be the factory we rely on to determine if this is a hacking attempt or not. Now, let's consider a different case. Let's say you have received this email address, but without the attachment. So what would be the final verdict if there was no attachment? It would be uh, actually not defined. Why? Because an email like this, without the attachment, wouldn't be an email asking for information to say it is a phishing attack to steal to steal a credit card and since there was no attachment our assumption uh, assumes that there was no password uh, no attachment it means it's also not a hacking attempt so attachments or you could see links also there was no links in this email address that's why we relied on the attachment to give the final verdict if there was email if there was links here somewhere and we analyzed the link assume we analyzed the link and the link the link was pointing the recipient to visit some page where they need to input some credentials we would say this is a phishing attack tailored to steal a credential. So it's a credential harvesting attack. But this one was malware attack. So let's see the questions. This is the transfer reference number listed in the email subject. We already know it. Who is the email from? What is his email address? What email will receive a reply to this email? We already answered these. You can find them from the fields here. What is the originating IP? We already answered this by clicking on view source. And this is the originating IP. Who's the owner of the originating IP? We can see they are this domain name. What is the SPF record for the return path domain? If you don't find the SPF in the email header, you might need to analyze the domain name. So we're going to copy the domain name of the sender. And go to MX Two Logs. Input the domain name, and look up the SPF record. So that is the SPF record of the domain name. The SPF record here um, indicate that this email address should be coming from a server, an SMTP server hosted at outlook.com but the header indicates that it failed the authentication so it might not be the case this is the SPF the DMARC 
record for the return path domain again we're gonna look up the dmark here okay and what's attachment name what is the SHA hash the file attachment this the size of the attachment and the actual file extension we already answered these when we analyzed the attachment so that was it for today guys